Hello there friends and welcome back to my channel. It's Amy here and today we're going to make a scrapbook layout inspired from the current September October idea book. When I got this idea book I fell in love with this page and if you've been following me for a while you might remember back in the summer I did several pages with triangles. Um, and I just love the geometric shapes, the circle, the triangle, the square. It's an easy way to incorporate a lot of different patterns onto a single page. So I knew I wanted to recreate this layout. And I have some photos uh, that were taken actually a year ago yesterday on the day of this filming of when my daughter and I went to New York City for the day. And I was thinking I could use these two square photos <clears throat> on this layout. Now, I went through my paper selection and I actually found that a collection that is debuting on November 1st went really well with these photos. I normally don't show product before it launches but these pictures really go quite well with the mixins collection that is coming out on november 1st so i am going to use some bits and pieces of this collection to create this page and then i also loved this layout right here which is also in the September, October idea book. And this is part of the Home for Christmas collection. And I thought that these triangles would correspond well with the squares here. So I'm thinking that I might create this page for the corresponding page, but rather than a four by six vertical photo, I will use two a three by four horizontal photos. So definitely take extra looks at the artwork in our idea books. That's why I like to call our catalogs idea books because each page is filled with ideas, inspiration, even if you use something as a starting off point and then kind of take your own turn on it they are great resources. So even when they retire, I save, I have all of my idea books and I do look through them. So I'm thinking that might be for the corresponding page, but we're going to go ahead and get to work on this page right here and see how we do. Okay, so the few things that I did off camera was I double matted these two photos. So I'm using a uh, white daisy and then the light side of Desert Rose. And I really like the way that Desert Rose makes these photos pop. And then for my base page, again, I have the Desert Rose, the light side, and then I cut a piece of white daisy an eighth of an inch smaller and mounted that on top. And then just looking at the do the page in the idea book, let's see if I could keep this here like this so we can see it. What the next step to do is to uh, line or uh, layer up the different square pieces of cardstock. And it looks like in this one in the idea book, or I mean the pattern paper, they distressed using the scissor distressing technique. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet, but what we are going to do is just kind of come up with a layout with these squares. And I cut these squares two by two. So it starts out with four and then this next one has five and I'm just going to randomly lay these squares out and um, what I did was I'm using the front and the back 
of these pattern papers and I know I know this isn't straight I'll make sure to adhere them straight right now what we're just doing is kind of auditioning the different pieces This needs to be this way. So according to the diagram, they did four, five, four, five, and then four. So four, five, four, like that. I guess I need to push these up a little bit. And I like this page because again, it's another way to just use a lot of different paper patterns. And because I only have two photos, um, This kind of makes it more decorative. Okay, so I, I know that um, this is not in the center of the camera, but I wanted you to be able to see the sample here that I'm going with. And then we've got these two photos. I love this one. This is uh, on the sidewalk and they had all these dried flowers around. So I'm thinking that maybe we could put this one right here and this one can overlap a bit. And then I did take one of my scallop circle punches. We could cut this in half and lay this underneath like this. It kind of gets lost in this pattern paper. So maybe we'll switch this one. Well, that's not gonna work because that's too similar. So what if we went like Remove this one. So see how I'm kind of just moving things around? And this is what you call dry fitting. And it's just a way to kind of get your bearings on what you want where. Okay, I kind of like that. And then you can see they have some banner pieces here. So I did cut these strips and thought they could go like this and like this. And that's where that white scallop circle comes in. Maybe we'll sponge that so it sticks out a bit. And then I do have the paperboard wood grain die cut shapes that are in our essentials book. This book released on August on, on September 1st and we've got all of these embellishments and this is the die cut shape so you can see them right here. So there's stars, there's bows, all kinds of different shapes. And you can see they use the shape, the stars here, but they have a little banner piece. And I thought that there was a banner piece here. There is a banner piece, but I did use it. Hmm. So we'll have to see if I have another Oh, I know what I was thinking. There's an arrow here. So I could trim that and stick it in there. And I like the different widths. So I thought that would work and we could still save the arrow for another piece. And then we have 
all of the stars in here so we could follow the pattern in the book with the stars and add the dots. But then they have this memories. And this actually came, comes from the Life is Good die cut collection. Now I've already used that memories. So I did pull in my stash and there was this memories and this is actually from a retired set. Um, forget what it's called. If it's still available, I will list what is available in the description box below. But I kind of liked this memories because it um, was a little bit more fancy. And it kind of matched the decor in the picture with the flowers. Flower, flower time. I think that's what this is called, this collection. So I kind of liked how that could go right there. Now, again, we'll probably have to do something so it doesn't get lost here, whether that mean maybe we'll switch this and bring it over here so so that pops but we don't want these two next to each other so maybe we'll switch this and this and i like that because then this piece isn't next to that piece so i do like that um so it is coming together uh I, like I mentioned, I like to lay everything out. And so far I'm thinking this is looking really good. I love the way this collection works with the colors in my photos. So what I think I will do off camera is adhere everything. I need to decide if I'm going to distress with my scissors. Um, maybe we will do that. So how you do that? is you just take your scissors, and what I recommend is keep your scissors closed so you don't dull your scissor blades, and then you just go like this. And so when we distress these, the squares are going to become, they may not be perfect squares, but that's okay. We will still adhere them flush with each other. So I'll do one more for you and then I'll do the rest off camera. And then I will get everything adhered down and be back. So hopefully you can see how it's just distressing the edges a little bit, just to give it a little bit more character. The other thing I recommend is you don't do that over your project, maybe move your project to the side or even do it um, over a garbage can. And then you can also see here, they took the white gel pen and did some faux stitching. So we'll see if we can incorporate that into the page once we get everything laid out. So let me go ahead and do that and I will be back. All right, so I have distressed, scissor distressed all my pieces. What's kind of fun is when you get those little cut marks, that just makes it more organic, more organic and um, I don't know, more artsy. So I did get those done, but before we go ahead and adhere them, I thought it might be kind of fun to do some stenciling in our Essentials Idea Book again that launched on September 1st. We have a new collection of stencils, both 12 by 12, and we have the A2 size card stencil, card front stencils, and the slimline. I love the brick. I've used this on numerous projects, and I thought because the photos are in New York City, you can see the cement, I thought that the brick might be kind of fun. I went back and forth because all our paper pieces are squares, but I chose to just use some mink. It's a very light gray. And I'm gonna pick up some ink with my blending brush and tap off. I'm working on my all-purpose mat. Normally I would tack down my stencil with some of my masking tape, but I'm just gonna really quickly, randomly, and gently and lightly add 
some brick. I don't know exactly what is going to show up with all of those little squares, but again, I'm just going to add a little bit here and there and um, perhaps some will show through. Now, a trick with stenciling, one, definitely tap off like I am doing and use a light hand because a lot more shows up than what you think. Um, trust me on that, I've learned the hard way. And start out lightly because you can always go back and add more. And I am just randomly sponging. And I am doing the inside of the cardstock as well because little bits and pieces will show up behind those two by two squares. So there we go. Okay, and then when I'm all done stenciling, I just run this under the water, uh, under the faucet, and then tap it dry with a paper towel and let it sit until it's dry. You don't wanna rub too hard because you don't wanna tear anything. So I will do that off camera a little bit later. And then we can start adhering our pieces. And then once I get these adhered, I will go in with the white gel pen and do some faux stitching, I think. So let me go ahead. You've already seen me place these down. I'm going to go ahead and adhere these and then I will come back. But I am liking the little bricks shining, peeping through behind. Kind of made our own pattern paper. Alrighty, we've got all our pieces adhered down and I am liking it with that really subtle brick stencil in the background. So I've got our inspiration page here, and then here is our page that we're building. So the next thing to do is to add our photos. And I'm thinking this is gonna go right here like this, and this one will go right here like this because we can hide some of that concrete with this photo. And then we've got our white scallop circle that I punched out, and that's gonna go right here. I do think I have a little bit of that mink ink. So I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of a kind of shadowy type distressing and we'll stick that right there. So let's go ahead and adhere that. And I am just using my favorite close to my heart adhesive tape runner. I love this and I love that it is now refillable. So I like that like that. And then I've got these two patterns. And what we're gonna do is dovetail them. So I'm gonna find the center Cut a slit and then go from one corner up to that slit and the other corner up to that slit and then we have a dovetail so that could go here and then we'll do it again to this one and we could use the polka dot or we'll decide once we get that uh, wood grain paperboard piece and I could even trim this so we got that and that and then we've got our little arrow and I'm just going to cut 
a little piece so we can use this arrow for something else. And this can go right in the center. And I think I'm gonna keep the desert rose and the polka dot because we've got lines here. But I'm wondering, I cut a slightly thinner, no, but that's the same size. So yeah, we'll go like this. And I'm liking that. And then let's go ahead and get some of these stars from the wood grain die cuts. Some of the backing of this is sticky from the last time I used these. Okay, so we've got our stars and I am just going to kind of copy our inspiration page. Do some different sizes. Do a big one down here. Maybe a small one. They kind of get lost on that pattern. We'll, we'll see what we're going to do there. But let's put our memories. Okay, I like how that looks. I wonder if we put the stars right there. I think they show up a little bit better there. And then I could maybe put some of the dots there. So we've got our memories. We could even, I'm wondering if I should distress this. We've got a um, brown brush. Let me see. Okay, I brought in my espresso pad and my brown blending brush and I'm just gonna kind of add some color to this. See how this will look. bit on the E. There we go. I really like that. Kind of gives it a shadowy look. So I really like that. And I guess because we did that, we should probably do it on the stars. So let's I'm going to pull in my all-purpose mat. Put the rest of these on that. And then I can just wipe my all-purpose mat. Just that little bit of sponging really goes a long way. Okay, so let's see how these look. I think these will allow this to pop. Yeah, I like that. And I lost my other star. There it is. All right, I am liking that. So let me get that adhered and then I'll be back and we'll add our faux stitching. All right, I am liking how this looks. Love the colors. And now we're gonna do some faux stitching. So I've got my white gel pen in my really cool tool organizer, desktop organizer. I love this thing, I have three of them. And um, if you haven't 
seen this trick with the gel pens, the white gel pens, you want to store them with the tip down. And then to get it started, I just rub it through my hands to warm it up. And then I'll test it. Yep. And then I am just going to add some faux stitching. And you know, you could even do this with a black pen with this, this particular layout because it's so light. But I got the, the white gel pen out. You know what, I don't really think you can see that very well. I think I'm gonna grab my black. I think that will look better. It will stand out more. So I'm gonna get my black Le Pen and we're just gonna go over this. And I apologize if you are seeing my head. So I'll do it there. Yeah, I like the black. The black stands out much better. So then we're going to do this one. And you could do this before you add your photos if you want. But if you do, then you just want to make sure you go around the entire perimeter. And then we'll do this one. And I think that's good. So I think the only thing left to do is to add some dots. So I pulled the black and white dots and that will tie in with the black faux stitching. And I don't have my piercing tool with me so I'm gonna take my scissors and use this and let's We'll do, I just lost it. <laughs> we'll do one right here. Did it fall on the page? I don't know where it went. And maybe do a medium size one right there. And then I'm gonna do a small star right here. And then I think we'll do a medium star right here. Oh, I forgot to adhere the stars. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do that real quick before I lose them. So we'll put one here. And one here. And then add one right here. And then one right here like that. Um, and then in our inspiration, they have our story and they have keep it simple. I liked on this sticker sheet, this is left over from the good life and I love the this day. So I thought we could use this and maybe I'll add some sponging around it. And I don't know if we should do it here. I think I'll do it right here this day. And then uh, 
Um, maybe we'll do a star. Just so that that stands out. Get another little star. And then I think we can call this page done. And I will do the corresponding page that I showed you I was thinking about doing. I'll do that on my next video. So be sure to check back later in the week to see that one done. But I like it. And I think that it... Looks just like this page, although we added a little bit of our own flair to it. So I appreciate you sticking with me as we did this page. If you liked this video and could give it a thumbs up, I sure would appreciate it. And if you don't already subscribe to my channel, if you'd be willing to click the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you will be notified when all, a new video comes up. That just tells YouTube that you like what you're seeing and you'll see more videos like that and it helps my little channel to grow. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.